we ask, are you considering investing in publicly traded LSPs? And 85% said no. 23% of respondents say that speech to speech machine translation is the hottest trend of the year. It's a combined solution between technology and, of course, the human talent and the human touch. And welcome to Slater Pod. We are very glad you decided to check in with us today. Hello, Esther. Hey, Florian. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know what interests me at the moment? It's game localization. I don't know. With all this metaverse stuff, the (laughs) streaming, video games, and now I have kids, you know, getting into prime video game age. And I don't know if I should keep them away from it or I should let them, I don't know, roam free in the metaverse. So we need to learn more. And so today we brought on a true expert, uh, Alessandra Vincenzi, head of audio localization at Keyword Studios. Yeah. So that'll be great. But first we'll discuss the hottest localization industry trends of 2022, according to our newsletter poll. Tell us, (laughs) Esther, what is the hottest trend that our readers are seeing? I'd say there's not there's not one that stands out by a large margin, uh, but we did have a, a yeah a fair number of uh, participants uh, in the, to the poll that what is the hottest industry trend for 2022? Uh, roughly 140 people um, replied. So uh, we had 23% of respondents say that speech to speech machine translation is the hottest trend of the year, 2022. So twenty, uh, so speech to speech machine translation. That's probably a little bit suggestive because we had all this coverage of it, right? We had, I mean, again, the 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 meta metaverse, prophecy. yeah, and then like Google and all these big tech companies coming out with speech to speech, MT. Well, not I, I wouldn't call it solutions, but I don't know options, research, um, mm-hmm. papers potential applications etc so yeah it'll you know it's speech to speech meaning again you take the actual audio data and then you you know translate it into another set of audio data so yeah. you don't go via that in between step okay I so mean, that's I how that we w- didn't specify that it was direct right so people nah. could just be thinking <laughs> yeah, stickler for detail <laughs> well yeah <laughs> But I mean, yeah, okay, so that was the that was the top one. That was twenty three percent of the votes. Um coming in a fairly close second. Uh the sec well, the hottest language trend uh, industry trend as voted for by nearly twenty percent of people was mega mergers among LSPs. Drum roll, thoughts there's no on, mega mergers yet. That. So um, I, I don't know, there's no there's not been any mega merger yet. So, you know, we're holding our breath for another mega merger that will be i don't know you know like uh, rws buying let's not let's not let's not nah. change it so i don't know <laughs> it would be like in the you're saying in the same region as like are you know merging with sdi or transperfect by semantics that kind uh, of level and that, up. That, that, w- that would be a big merger, but I think the mega would be the oh, kind mega, of RWS, okay. SDL like level. The super you know. agent. We're, we're restricting this to super agencies, in your view. Yeah, we is, are. Is what we didn't, we didn't specify. Okay. Yeah, we didn't specify it in a poll, but now here we are, reverse back interpreting what we what we <laughs> added as an option. So that's number two. Number three, uh, it's kind of plain. Continued rise of machine translation. Well, okay, that's sixteen percent. Localization jobs boom. Uh, 15. That's, what is it? Percent. Yeah, 15 is at number five. What, what's next? Better MT post editing technology with this is kind of a distant one, two, three, four, fifth, uh, yeah. with about 11% of the vote. We can now probably we throw. Yeah, sorry, that we can probably throw the next one in. It's almost similar, like interactive machine translation. So I guess yeah, you could yeah. call it. Like if you don't post the UI, edit, well, yeah, the, it's the UI the aspect. Translators, yeah. That that one still kind of um, surprises me that this interactive element isn't just a bigger deal. That w- it really that it's still the post editing. The here's your raw output. Linear, you know, like very linear. Yeah, why not this? Th- 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 we need to have li- Lil back on and just give us an update. Where where, mm-hmm. where are we with the interactive part? Because that's the way I would want to work. And then 
Number uh, the, the third one or the, uh, another one would be TMS technology for lock buyers. That was not super popular. Um, oh, so yeah. th that was a very distant last. And then another one was like something else. I wish you had a free text option. So yeah, if we had a free text option, then people would have given us their, their input. So of course those options are the ones that we had for them to choose. So yeah. Um, they can find I it agree. in or comment what, on, our, uh, on the podcast. What's yours? What's your, what's your favorite here? Um. <laughs> you have the free text option, Esther. I do have the free text option. Well, now I'm trying to live with myself because I'm like, that's not fair. Um, I mean, I think the continued rise of machine translation. Sorry to okay. be boring. Yeah. Fair. But there's still more to do. It's still it's still a, me a mega trend. I think within that, yeah, speech to speech, you're going to see you know more focus on that. But I still think it's not it's not so widespread that I would that I would sort of put it top personally. I'm, I'm I think I'm on the TMS tech for lock buyers. Uh, it's a little nishy, but the, I, I do in the think significant that minority of. Uh... <laughs> I, I yeah, I I do think it's just a very very uh, important trend for the service providers that these platforms are basically going for for the enterprise buyer and are really trying to you know, get a hold of the the, the, the client, uh, the ownership mm. of the account. And then, you know, that obviously is not great for, for the vendors. So I think there's this battle going on, which I've talked about in many Slatercons and uh, many of my presentations there. So I, I think this is an important one, especially since all these uh, TMSs are now super cashed up and need to spend the money somewhere, right? So there's, um, yeah, there's they a lot of They can also spend it on hiring, which was another yeah, they, of the options, wasn't it? Localization well, job scheme. Yeah, they'll hire and then they compete <laughs> with the service. Uh, so all of it, basically, the industry the industry trend is up. <laughs> up, everything. Um, and then, yeah, talking about jobs. So we had mm. a piece last week, uh, nice title there. Look who's hiring localization professionals for the metaverse. And uh, basically, we talked about um, the trend of localization in, you know, whatever, the VR. Um, and, and one of the, the key hiring uh, organizations there is Meta, is Facebook, right? So they, mm. they have their internationalization team. And we unpack one of the job posts, which said, like, you will ensure that we deliver a great linguistic experience on new devices like Quest and Portal to our international audience through high quality translations for our Reality Labs product, which will be part of the metaverse. And that was according to a job posting for a Korean language manager. Um, and Reality Labs is that entity of Facebook that I think they've inve they're investing about ten billion a year. So it's not generating Already. any revenue yet, but they're like spending ten yeah. billion a year. That's part of the uh, well, I guess problem of yeah. you know recent like Facebook stock drops because they're investing a lot of money into that and so far haven't generated a lot of revenue. But it's generating job opportunities for localization professionals and quite frontier ones at that. Um, and then we had a, actually this, the, the, we had this, uh, you know, we always had this uh, poll that we run yeah. in our weekly newsletter that's going out to our almost 15,000 people now, or actually more, I need to check, around 15,000. And so this, and then we write a write-up, and this one was super interesting. So there's another one there that we ask, are you considering investing in publicly traded LSPs? And 85% said no. And yeah, but I mean, also, how many of these people are actually investing in any kind of, you know, publicly traded companies? I mean, you ca yeah, you're, almost everyone, I guess, is via some kind of pension plan. But yeah, all right. Oh, well, yeah, so but I mean, directly. Yeah. Directly. Cool. OK, and then 12 percent said yes. And then only a couple of said like that's a lot of X in one localization basket, because if you're, you know, if you're subscribing to the newsletter, you're probably in the localization oh, right, yeah. industry. So, uh, yeah, not too much interest in investing in uh, the handful of publicly traded LSPs. Then on the business outlook, uh, we also asked in December, um, uh, what's the business outlook for 2022? So 37% mm. said very positive, 36% uh, said positive. So that's, you know, more than uh, like almost three quarters have a positive or very positive outlook. And only a handful had negative or cautious. So, again, this is the the bullish case for the language industry, which is the title of my presentation at Slatercon Remote, which is going to happen on May, March 16th. So here's the plug. Um, now, and not, what, what's the next? That, that one's super interesting. Walk us through this, Esther, that, that next poll. Yeah. 
Well, so this, this is from a couple of weeks ago, and the question yeah. was, uh, should corporations block staff access to free machine translation services? So I guess off the back of the story that we had about Swiss Post uh, blocking That's right. access, right? Um, so uh, just over 50% of uh, the readers said uh, <laughs> the company should just buy the pro license, so bite the bullet and pay for uh, a subscription to whatever it is, Google, uh, DeepL, et cetera. Um, Twenty-eight percent said corporations should block staff access to free MT services, and twenty percent said no, they should not. All right, so there is a, a big market for pro license, or a, yeah, a big market. A demand. lot of people think demand. Yes, um, and so the the, the company people. at the heart of the story was Deep L, mm. and. Uh, they actually are hiring for a Turkish localization and language specialist. And guess where they're hiring, Esther? Uh, in jobs. the metaverse. No, I don't no, know. <laughs> in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in the metaverse. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's a good one. No, they're hiring on Logjobs at logjobs.com. Ah. So they're hiring a Turkish localization language specialist. And why is this? We looked at this before the podcast. So why is this relevant, uh, actually, that they're hiring for a Turkish localization and language specialist well i think i mean i think it's great uh sort of expanding you know the hi the hiring and into new languages well but crucially they don't at least per the website they don't currently seem to add uh, sorry offer turkish mm. as a target language so this is suggestive of uh, what might be what might be on the cards um and potentially yeah deeper will be adding turkish to their list of, of the growing list of languages um, like it. But it also sounds like a cool job for anybody uh, yeah, who's interested. I mean, the, the role is to localize and proofread from English into Turkish, to both write and edit Turkish language content, um, to advise on aspects of Turkish language and culture, uh, to test and evaluate machine translation data. So it's, it's super, it seems like quite broad. Um, obviously, you've got yeah. the, the strong focus on the Turkish language. And they've also said... This person will be assisting in PR campaigns for the Turkish-speaking media um, and also communicating Turkish-specific ideas and suggestions relating to DeepL's language service to other teams. So it's it's quite a broad sort of advocacy role, I'd say, as well as the nitty-gritty of, of, of proofreading, editing, etc. Um, and in terms of the location, I mean, they, are, they offer remote work at the moment in Germany, Netherlands, UK, Poland. Um, and they have offices in Cologne, London, Amsterdam. So they said they're open to remote uh, in those locations or from one of their offices. We should invite them on the pod. Maybe they're a they used to be so guarded and they didn't uh, communicate with the outside world too much, right? Mm. And uh, that that. But of course, they they also say they have a hundred million users. That's part of the job ad. So yeah, and, you know, I we saw spoke that. many times yeah. about the traffic they're attracting. So basically, yeah, it's one of the more stealthy companies in the space, uh, but also one of the most successful ones. So that, of course, triggers our interest. And I, I, I like what they said there in the bullet point: assisting PR campaigns for the Turkish-speaking media. So yeah. it looks like, I mean, they're building up the product, but then also when they launch the product, they probably want to do a bit Go of a PR bliss. Mm. So mm -hmm. yeah, now that would be. Maybe one of the jobs that filters into our uh, number crunching for our language industry job index, which yeah. climbed back a little bit cyclically. We've seen this every year now almost, right? Yeah. So what's the February stats look like? Yeah, February for the language industry job index is up slightly. So by a very small amount, 0 0.65 points, um, it's climbed to 173.4 in February, um, if you remember or you're tracking it. Um, yeah, there was a drop in January, which is that kind of seasonal dip after the holidays. Um, so very small climb in February. Um, and also, I mean, I think similar to previous years, there was a peak um, back in December of 108, just over 180. So we're not, we haven't quite rebounded from the January dip um, in February, um, but you know, I expect next couple of months we'll also, we'll see. Recover yes. further recovery and also yeah uh then some increase also um so yeah that's what ha what's happening that's Boy what's happening timing. and mm -hmm. now we're heading over to alessandra and talk about audio localization in the gaming space all right <laughs> And welcome.
welcome back to SlaterPod, everyone. Today we're joined by Alessandra Vincenzi. Alessandra is the head of audio localization at video game services provider Keyword Studios. Hello, Alessandra. Hello, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining everyone. us. Hello. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thanks so much for joining us, of course, today. So where does this podcast find you today? What country? What city? Italy. I'm working from home today, north of Italy, close to Milan, 30 minutes by car. Milano. Very nice. Very Milano. Nice. You are right. <laughs> very nice. Uh, so close from here since we dug all these tunnels. So uh, first, uh, Alessandro, tell us a bit more about your professional background. You know, what was your route into the game localization industry? You know, how did you get into audio localization specifically? I'm, I'm really interested in hearing more about game lock and audio uh, in particular. Sure. Well, by chance, if I have to confess, let me start saying that I have a degree in uh, translation. Then I started uh, as a freelance translator. And one day, suddenly, I, I found this job posting of a company close to my house, a reviewer part-time. So I said, well, why not? It's not that far. Let's, let's give it a try and see. Then the company was Binari Sonori. And uh, I started my career in uh, localization and then audio localization there in 2001 as a reviewer mm -hmm. after three days as a project manager and then step by step uh, audio manager, vendor manager, managing all the external studios for us. And then when Binari Sonori joined Keywords, uh, uh, I moved to this global position supervising all the studios uh, as part of the audio services uh, service line. And in 2019, um, as head of localization uh, division for Audiolog. So tell us, or help us understand a bit more about keywords, sort of in a nutshell. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, the different technology and service lines of keywords, and also where localization fits into the wider organization. Sure. Keywords is a company of, uh, I would say, almost 25 years of experience. Localization, localization for games was the first uh, service that um, we um, provide. And then step by step, uh, all, all the others were added. So uh, we, we, we provide a full platform on services uh, from our creation, uh, testing, uh, audio services, localization. Uh, I hope to remember all of them. Um, then we have uh, customer care. Uh, marketing uh, and uh, software engineering. We are in. Uh, we have uh, seven facilities all over the world in four continents: uh, Asia, Australia, um, the Americas, and Europe, and uh, more than twenty-three countries. But uh, not. I mean, uh, mm, these are figures which are surely important. But I think that with the platform of services that we are providing. I'm sure that if we think about of any video games, uh, recent one or in the past, uh, I think I could say that we have a bit of keywords in any of them. And this is something that we are really proud of. Excellent. Um, and in terms of audio localization, so you've got, I think, diff different pockets of localization happening across some of the different service lines, as far as I can tell. Um, but what what is it that you're localizing in a game context um, from in, in terms of the audio? Um, and then outside of the game, are there any other assets that you work on um, and do audio for? Okay, so um, localization is uh, what helps us to give to the player the true experience. Okay, but if you think about uh, when, when you're playing your game and your preferred characters are speaking your own language, okay, mm -hmm. you are having the most uh, exciting and immersive experience than ever to me. And this is what is audio localization. So it gives the real flavor of the game in your language, meaning that you are focusing, uh, playing the game, and uh, you want to be distracted by listening something else in, in other languages. So you are playing in your own language. And if you think about uh, the projects that we usually manage, uh, we have many from 100 lines uh, to 1,000 lines, uh, from uh, one language to be localized uh, to up 50 languages to be localized. And of course, uh, 
the turnaround time that we have for any of them may vary from days, if we are speaking about the very small video game, and the, the, um, it comes to months mm. while speaking about the big uh, AAA titles. Mm. And mainly the focus for us, for audio localization, we are focused on game. Uh, yes. Question from my side. Do you have to be a gamer to work in game lock? And is like everyone on your team a gamer? <laughs> <laughs> we have all uh, passion for game, yes. May I confess that no, all of us are gamers. Of course, we come from different uh, reality and different skills. I used to play more in the past, uh, but uh, yes, I'm a part-time <laughs> gamer. Let's say. I mean, it's a lot of gaming, right? I mean, if you work eight, nine hours a yeah. day, and then like you go home, like, hey, let's yeah. do more gaming. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say that with group mobile games that are becoming more and more popular, it's easier if you are not a full-time player to, I mean, you are on the sofa or on, on a train uh, and then you can play uh, easily instead of uh, setting up the console and everything uh, to be ready to play. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting one to dwell on. How different are like mobile games to localize than like the big, yeah, AAA monster console games? Yeah, well, the, the, the gamer loves, of course, the console uh, PC experience. Okay, this is where we started. What is becoming, as you were saying, more and more popular are mobile, where audio localization is not that present right now, since uh, it's more focused on uh, localization, text localization. But step by step, they are becoming more and more complex, uh, and more languages will be added. It's, uh, it's a different experience. Uh, uh, to me, of course, uh, it, it's good to have this mobile uh, if you want to do something fast, okay, to, to play faster, you don't have much time. But the, um, the ancient school, let's say the old school is uh, the console game, the PC game, where you have, of course, uh, this amazing uh, uh, audio, this graphics, uh, and, the, and the experience is different. Now let's take another step. And we spoke about it before the podcast briefly because it got mobile, console, and now, you know, it's the metaverse, it's full immersive, it's VR. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, like, do we even, it, does it even make sense to talk about it at this point in time, like metaverse localization or, or not yet? Yeah, good question. This is something that, that uh, we believe uh, it's really, really interesting. It's a thing indeed, uh, and uh, our eyes are wide open on that. Uh, customers are reacting uh, in a different way at different speed and they have all different plans. So let's see how it will develop, but we expect that uh, in the next uh, 12 months, I would say, we will see a big impact uh, on the industry with Metaverse. Wow, okay, that's wow. So it's becoming, becoming a real thing at some point. Yeah, it looks like, yes, yes. So let's see, I mean, uh, let's see how it will evolve, but it's something that we are, of course, interested in. But also on the, uh, maybe on more the, the channel side, like we've been writing about like Stadia, Google Stadia, Apple Arcade. Okay. Well, Apple Arcade is on the, on the mobile phone, but st let's stay with the streaming side, like Google Stadia. Um, is, is that in any shape or form relevant for your day-to-day, -day, kind of the mode that it gets to people? So if it's streamed or, you know, you, you buy it like in a console, does that, that, that doesn't have any impact? Well, if I have to, to think about the process that we apply and the, the level of care and um, attention that we apply to console video game and all the others and streaming, as you were saying, I don't see any big differences in the process. Mm. Then for us, it's pretty the same. It just may be likely. Do, do you see like volumes increasing because it's easier to access? Like, you know, Google Stadia, you, you fire it up and you have like 200 games right there. Oh, of course, yes. Well, if we speak about uh, the process that we apply itself uh, from moving from a video game uh, for console, then the streaming one uh, is the same. The, the, the same professional and talented pool of, uh, of talent, uh, project managers, the, the workflow is the same. But yes, we may have uh, more, uh, um, more video games, more titles, of course. So the, the, the market will become uh, uh, bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, 
And then just thinking more about the, the sort of process and who's involved in audio localization. And I mean, what's your experience of how involved do you get or does the team get in terms of casting voices, onboarding voice acting talent and, and that part of the process? Yeah, this is surely an interesting question. And uh, we have, uh, we are always happy to, to have new talent uh, to, to, to work with and to, to, to expand our pool and database. Then our recruiting process for, for actors is always open and uh, in progress. And uh, we are active uh, and actively working also with the uh, dubbing school and acting mm. school to have, uh, uh, as soon as we have a new actor ready, after um, after the school we are happy to 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 start working with them to have always new voices uh, in our um, in our database it's super important also to be mentioned that uh, all data that we are using from all the actors are of course protected uh, and we are following all the rules uh, and all the regulation in any of uh, the countries mm. uh, where we record mm. And then, so casting for a specific title or, or something like that, is there a lot of back and forth with the client to propose different different actors, different type, styles of voices for a particular okay. character? Yeah, well, um, again, uh, customers are different and they have uh, all a different approach. So we usually act uh, as a consultant uh, and the trust that we have built uh, over the years. But... Um, we may have uh, different requests from uh, please cast all the characters that you have in the game or we would like only to cast the first uh, five uh, ten main characters and then we totally trust you and uh, we believe uh, that you can do all the rest mm -hmm. so the we are open of course to to any suggestion and we are happy to support uh, as a consultant uh, more than a service provider in that direction mm -hmm. then uh, we may have database casting session uh, or live casting and uh, the, ca the provider i mean as you were saying sometimes we have a lot of back and forth with the uh, with the client specifically for the main characters mm -hmm. but it's it's an interesting part it's the artist where the artistic part of the game starts and it's really I'm nice. sure it is yeah and you mentioned something about uh, you know complying with regulations um complying with with different um, laws yeah. in place I mean are there certain languages or certain language combinations that are, become more challenging um either due to regulations or because they're linguistically complex or because there just isn't enough talent are there any that really okay. stand out as being problematic in that sense of course. Well, um, with our 25 years of experience, I mean, uh, we have seen many challenges and we have overcome all of them together with our clients. So we are really happy about that. Let me add that we have, uh, right now I don't see any specific challenge connected to the languages since uh, over the years we, we set up a specific uh, resource management team mm -hmm that is supporting the production to look for the right uh, recording studio, the right resources uh, um, in the target country that the new one that we want to open, or I mean, uh, to, to keep a good relationship uh, with the, the one that we usually provide. And um, we have uh, a strong uh, and intense training program where we start uh, to connect uh, production, the resource management uh, and the studio so that they are all aligned about which are our expectations. And uh, this is both in terms of production itself, but as you were saying before, in terms of regulations, uh, uh, local contracts, the usage of the rights of the voice actor, which is uh, a tough mm. topic, uh, uh, of course, for us. If I have to think about something uh, that it's not a challenge, but I would say it's a new trend that we are uh, facing over the past a couple of years is connected to um, more and more games are, uh, as we were saying, mobile and coming from Asia mm -hmm. and then from China, meaning that we have a new source language that uh, instead 
before we were used to have uh, English as source language. So UK and USA were used to be the source country. Mm -hmm. Right now is uh, China, uh, where we are having a lot of uh, um, new mobile, new games, uh, and the source language for reference is, uh, of course, the Chinese, uh, and this uh, change a bit uh, the, our internal workflow, where step by step uh, we are working on a sort of hybrid solution where we are putting the artistic experience uh, of uh, the creation from the US, uh, like Hollywood movie, the um, TV series, okay, we have teams that are focused on that, uh, and of course the structure localization workflow, and we are working to combine uh, the best of mm -hmm. the two of them. How do you categorize the voices? I don't know how, I'm, it's, it's, sorry, I just thought of that now, that question, but basically, for example, yesterday I watched a cartoon, not a game, but a cartoon with the kids, and the voice of, of like one of the characters was just so perfect. It was one of those like Disney Pixar shorts, yeah. like the seven minute things. And the, it was just the perfect voice. And I'm like, oh my God, like how did they select that? H how do you do that in the background in your kind of research, uh, sorry, in your like resource, I don't know, library or something? Like, is there a particular yeah. like way you categorize voices? Yeah, sure. This is something that starts from uh, the very beginning with the casting session. So we invite uh, a new actors that uh, um, never work with us, uh, and then uh, from that session, our casting manager, our, bin, our dubbing director, can identify working with you, Florian, and say, okay, you are good for um, child voice, uh, uh, you are um, 30 male voice, and then we can start uh, to define uh, which will be the main categories for that voice. Then step by step, of course, uh, we may understand that you are good in uh, do some specific uh, characters, since your voice uh, can fit, uh, uh, I would say, the prince uh, or Esther the princess. Uh, then uh, we have the monster, deep voice, uh, and that's it. And then step by step, of course, we have all this level, and all these labels will be added uh, in the database that we have. Mm -hmm. And so each time that we have, uh, okay, we have 10 monsters, we need four male uh, voice between 30 to 40 years old for the casting and then step by step the casting director listen to all the source files of course to to identify which is the best I, I got a moment so is it is it like Excellent. super competitive like in the in the kind of text translation space it's sometimes like okay there's only so many legal translators for example you have in in, in your database that may be all booked out so your problem would be okay we need more monsters and like they they may <laughs> all be booked out or <laughs> That's why that's why our recruiting process is always ongoing. Yeah, go. yeah, yeah. So we may need uh, since it may happen that someone may decide to to change his career, and then uh, I don't want to be an actor anymore, and then we need uh, a monster to replace that the old one. Got it. Uh, and another one you mentioned um, that the voice is protected, right? And we had. Um, uh, we had the CEO of Synthesia, Victor Ripperbellion, about a year ago, and they're using kind of synthesized, uh, um, or they they have a library of those voices. There's this whole, uh, how do you call it? Uh, yeah, the, kind of the license management, right, for your avatar, for your voice, etc. So, what are your what is your thoughts on artificial voices, fully artificial voices, and potentially like recorded voices that are now used to. Uh, create new output in a sense. So you're, you're taking, for example, my voice profile and then you make it say other things. I don't know, it's a convoluted question, but generally your view on like artificial voices going forward. So uh, the technology is of course in progress uh, and uh, we, um, we are working with several companies and several and providing them. The, again, uh, keywords, uh, would like to to be part of the innovation, so it's one of the of the um, the area that we would like to develop. Right now, at the stages specifically for video game, where high amount of uh, emotions are required in the in the video game recording, uh, we see some areas where we can use the artificial voice. Um, tutorial, mission briefing, where of course you are providing, the character is providing instruction without uh, any specific uh, emotion. Then uh, what we 
safety and we use already in our daily life uh, a car navigation system uh, you have uh, messages uh, in um, elevators or something so if we have the very same situation in the video game of course we will propose the usage uh, of the artificial voice and we see also the usage in um, some secondary mm -hmm. characters which are in the background mm -hmm. in the game with the not a big amount of lines to be recorded uh, and of course uh, again with the low um, level of emotional required so this is right now the area of course in other markets you may have uh, um, the usage um, could be wider okay but right now for us this would be that and of course the the rights uh, and the usage voice uh, of the actor and speaking now of the sound director should be protected and has to be protected and in keywords we have a specific platform uh, for the actor's contract and the actor's buyout and we are following all the rules and this uh, artificial uh, uh, new technology is something that should be taken into account uh, uh, to in this uh, in this Got scenario it. How about during COVID? I mean, were there were there challenges relating to you know everybody suddenly not being able to go into the studios operationally? What impact did that have? And and I mean, what are your thoughts on, on things like the cloud-based dubbing uh, or voiceover solutions as a as a solution for, for either for COVID or for you know the future? Yeah, well, it was a challenge indeed. I mean. I still remember March 2020 when uh, we were forced, of course, uh, to to stop um, mm. to stop production. Mm. But I have to say that um, after the initial shock, uh, the team was amazing. So they set up uh, immediately this remote recording solution in all countries, uh, the internal studio for keywords, but even the external partners. And uh, after not even a couple of weeks, we were able to provide mm. uh, content to the customers. So. Mm. Uh, the production never stopped at that stage. Of course, uh, this opened us a new, a, new, a new scenario with the high level of flexibility that can be used and can be extremely helpful in some specific situation. Small retake, casting, so the actor is on holiday, which is something we usually have our peak of recording in August, where all actors in Italy are, of course, um, on holidays and then I'm sure that uh, this uh, remote recording uh, solution uh, will help. But uh, I don't know if you ever have the chance to attend to a recording session in a studio. It's the, the connection that we, the, the atmosphere, the connection that we have uh, with the dubbing director, actors and the sound engineer there, it, it's amazing. and. Uh, you are recording in a safety environment uh, where all the people are focused on that. While instead recording from home, uh, you may have uh, the doors, of the dog outside barking. You may have uh, your neighbor who decided to start mm. hammering on the wall, uh, and then uh, you have to stop. So it's uh, it's a good idea. It's something really helpful for some specific situation. But to me, the preferred choice is still uh, record in studio. And you see immediately the magic of the audio localization started, and then uh, it will be transferred. Into yeah, this idea. is interesting. Huh? So it's it, while the yeah, the 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 COVID kind of pushed what could be moved to the cloud, maybe on the cloud. But it's just you don't you don't you you're really thinking we're losing a bit of the magic here if if it's just all all cloud based, huh? Um, yeah. What's your sense of 2020, 2023 kind of outlook. Uh, do you also, would you agree, and I'm sorry, I'm throwing this in at the end here, but like that there's kind of a convergence between media and gaming a little bit as well. And like, what are your thoughts of the next one or two years, uh, maybe even three, four for this space? Sure. We see a lot of innovation, as I was mentioning. So we will keep our I open on speech synthesis, as we were saying, and I see it's a combined solution between technology and, of course, the human talent and the human touch in this direction. Mobile, as said, will become more and more complex, and I see an evolution in the request of having more audio localization in this kind of, uh, of title for the future. 
more titles coming from Asia. And yes, of course, we see this conversion, uh, convergence between, uh, as you were saying, uh, the media and the video game, a combination of something new in that direction. But this is something that, of course, we are already experiencing daily right now. And um, well, I can't disclose anything, but believe me that in 2022 we will have we are working on very very amazing title, and we will have uh, interesting things to play. Got it. Thanks. I understand you have to be careful what you disclose publicly because Keywords is a large publicly listed company, right? So if there's anything <laughs> relevant, <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna break it here. Uh, I think stock market relevant, right? Um, well, that was super interesting. Thanks so much for, for uh, taking time to do the podcast, Alessandro. Really appreciate it. Thanks to thanks, you. Alessandra. Thanks to you. Really Absolutely. happy. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Bye.